Mark Rogers TV talking to Maryland football with Ryan Connors from Testudo Times, SB Nation's platform for Maryland Athletics. Uh, Ryan, uh, let's talk some running back. And uh, it's it's a good conversation talking Maryland football these days. You move from three wins to six. You get to a postseason play. But much more than that is the recruiting class. So one of the big gets is Anthony McFarland. It's going to be interesting to see if he can take away carries from a guy in Ty Johnson that um, – exploded for over nine yards per carry gained a thousand yards and definitely added some spark to the offense and in may, many ways kept you in the bowl game and gave you a fighting chance at the end against boston college yeah definitely uh you know anthony mcfarland he was a guy that uh, in talking to maryland fans he was a guy everyone really knew about he goes to damatha catholic high school which is just down the road from maryland's campus but uh he was almost a luxury recruit for maryland because they already had ty johnson who had a surprisingly good sophomore year. He was a, he's sort of a diamond in the rough. They found a, a local Maryland guy. And then Lorenzo Harrison had a very good freshman year. He actually goes, he went to the same high school as McFarland, but was a year older. And both of them came in and in a running back core that had five, at least five options, uh, Johnson, who's a sophomore, and Harrison, who's a freshman, quickly, uh, you know, split the line, share the carries right there and, there and edged out a couple seniors. And, uh, you know, coming coming into next season, if you just had Lorenzo Harrison and Ty Johnson, I think Maryland would have been just happy with that. But with McFarland, they get a guy who can play slot receiver a lot, can play in the backfield, and can sort of do a lot of different roles in uh, Maryland's offense. And that's something, you know, that offensive coordinator, Walt Bell, didn't, didn't necessarily have last year. They had a couple of versatile wide receivers who could line up in the backfield a little bit. But uh, this, this gives Maryland a – cements what was already Maryland's best position with, um, you know, and not even just McFarland. They got Javon Leak, who plays a similar position to McFarland, who's a little bit lower rated, but it's still pretty highly regarded. And uh, Teon Fleet Davis, who's a local guy, who will probably be, uh, you know, he's more of a straight running back, but he should be pretty powerful between the tackles, I imagine. Yeah, Ryan, with all this uh, talent in camp, uh, guys like Lorenzo Harrison, he's probably got a little bit more incentive to keep his nose clean and stay out of trouble. He missed the bowl game, missed uh, some games late in the season, but ran for over seven yards per carry himself with five touchdowns. So the the depth is there. You can sustain injuries. Obviously, once you your top-level guys, which McFarland should prove to be as a top three running back in the nation coming in. You want those guys out there, but Man, it's a better situation, and we made the same claim at uh, quarterback, but it may take some time to see that at the quarterback position, but at the running back position, we should see uh, pretty immediate dividends, you would think. Yeah, I think so. I mean, running running game was the clear strength of Maryland's offense this year. Uh, their rankings in uh, Bill Connolly's S&P was about, you know, they're about 15th in the country, and you imagine this season will only get better. Uh, their offensive line returns – at least three guys who are really highly rated recruits and the two guys who left are being replaced by pretty, pretty uh, highly rated recruits. And uh, you know, their pass protection was a little suspect last year, but they were, they were pretty good at running the ball. And I think, you know, with guys like this, with three running backs like this, especially it'll allow uh, Walt Bell, who came in as the offensive coordinator last year, he came in with a very up tempo scheme that you didn't necessarily see very often from Maryland last year. And I imagine with more running backs, uh, you know, it'll it'll enable him to sort of change people out even quicker and really, really uh, pump up the tempo. All right. Maryland more competitive in the Big Ten East this past season, getting to a bowl game and uh, definitely with the ability at running down back this season to protect its quarterback and its passing game and try to uh, stretch out those games and grind the clock out and, and stay in some of these games to protect some inexperience at quarterback. Ryan Connors from Testudo Times tracking the Maryland running game for us. Ryan, we appreciate it.